Hi everyone, Dan Albus, Member of Parliament for Central Okanagan, and Similkameen Nicola. I'm here in Peachland, British Columbia, here to tell you a little story, a story about a little bat who found herself into some trouble. Now, we're very fortunate in the Okanagan that we don't have a lot of mosquitoes that you see near uh, other lakes in British Columbia, and that's because the bats uh, come by and they, they eat them. And they do lots of other things, and you probably don't see them that often because they come out usually when you've already gone to sleep but they're a very important critical species for our area. And I'm really excited that uh, I have a book uh, by Darlene Hartford, a friend of mine, uh, who is, is, is going to teach us a little bit more about the bats and what they do. So I'm very happy right now to read to you. Uh, this is Carla the Clumsy Bat by Darlene Hartford. Darlene is a local author and proponent for bat education. And so we're gonna be reading a little bit about Carla. So let's begin. This book is dedicated to Kayleen and Robin, her grandchildren. Carla was beautiful and graceful, soaring throughout the attic, flittering in and out of tiny holes. Her exquisite wings were made of a thin, leathery skin stretching from her legs, over her arms, and along her fingers. Carla shared a roost in the attic of the 100-year-old schoolhouse with thousands of others like herself. Carla was a juvenile Yuma bat. Carla made a high-pitched squeal when flying. The sound waves from Carla's squeal were invisible and some were ultrasonic. People cannot hear ultrasonic sound waves. The sound waves from Carla's squeal bounced off insects and other objects in her flight path. The sound waves then bounced back to her big ears as an echo. Carla's brain used the echo to make a sound picture of the object in her mind. This is called echolocation. Using echolocation helped Carla find tasty insects to eat and helped her fly extremely fast without bumping into things. Until one night when all of that changed. Carla the beautiful, Carla the graceful, mysteriously became a very clumsy bat. On that mysterious night, Carla was flying out of the schoolhouse backwards against the wall. Had Carla really bumped into something? Or had she bumped into somebody? This never happened to her before. She had perfect echolocation. Just then, Grampy Bat stumbled past and said grumpily, Carla, watch where you're flying. Don't be so clumsy. Oh, I'm sorry, Grampy Bat, apologized Carla, holding the bump on her head. Grampy Bat had already flown off, so Carla continued on her way, too. Carla didn't have much luck catching food on that mysterious night. Something wasn't right. But what was it? Carla was stumped. Eventually, just before sunrise, Carla flew home to the attic with a grumbling tummy and a sore head. When Carla was home, she bandaged her head, then curved her little claws into a timber beam and fell asleep upside down, grumpy and hungry. When Carla awoke the next night, all the other bats teased her about bumping into Grampy Bat and, and her bandaged head. Carla felt awful. Instead of flying out of the roost with all the other bats, Carla waited patiently for everyone to leave. Once she was alone, Carla soared slowly towards the vent and then flew cautiously into the darkened sky. But as careful as she was, Carla clipped one of her beautiful wings on the schoolhouse sign. Oh no, groaned Carla, not another clumsy night. Throughout the night, Carla flew around the schoolyard desperately trying to catch insects. Carla scooped only a few bugs in her wings, and even that was difficult. Usually she was an excellent hunter, but not anymore. Something wasn't right. Suddenly, Carla's echo created a picture of a massive bug in her brain. The scrumptious treat was right in front of her. Carla flew towards the target, opened her wings wide to draw the delicious morsel into her mouth. Ouch, ouch, eek, squealed, squealed Carla. What happened? She hurt all over. What had she captured? Carla slowly opened her wings while expecting to see a humongous moth. There was no moth there was only a prickly pine cone. 
What happened to Carlos' echolocation? Why did the falling prickly pine cone show up as a picture of a humongous bug in her head? What was wrong? Why was she so clumsy? Carla, aching all over, slowly made her way back to the roost in search of some band-aids. Carla was getting hungrier and grumpier as each night passed. She didn't want to hurt herself anymore. And how could she catch dinner with her radar system clearly wasn't working. Suddenly, Carla had an idea. It's brilliant, squealed Carla as she rummaged through an old chest on the attic floor. Here it is, squealed Carla triumphantly, pulling a tiny headlamp out of the chest and fitting it gently over her bandaged head. It fits perfectly, squealed Carla, as she excitedly turned on the headlamp switch and flew off. Throughout the night, Carla caught a feast of insects with her little headlamp shining so brightly. She was feeling so much better. Then suddenly, clamp. Ouch, my wing. What is that, squealed Carla in fright. When Carla tried to squeal a second time, her squeal was gone. She was frantic. Children in the park had been catching fireflies in bug jars when they mistakenly captured Carla with her brightly shining headlamp. The lid of the jar clamped down tightly on Carla's delicate wing. Oh. The children were surprised when they looked in their bug jar. They knew this little critter wasn't a firefly, but was it a bat? They had seen many bats before, but none of those bats had a bright light shining between their pointy ears. None of those bats had bandages on their bodies, and none of those bats opened their mouths without making a piercing squeal. The children were confused and frightened. They ran away screaming, dropping the bug jar as they fled the schoolyard. As the jar dropped to the ground, the lid flew open and Carla was freed. With a very sore wing and a broken headlamp, Carla flew to safety. Then she flew slowly back to the roost, bandaged her bent wing and hid high in the rafters. The next evening, Mother Bat was shocked when she found Carla. Carla, you have more bandages and a bent wing. What happened? Squealed Mother Bat with worry. Oh, Mother, rasped Carla. I bumped into Grampy Bat and the school sign. I caught a falling pine cone for dinner. Then I was captured as a firefly and lost my squeal. Suddenly, Mother Bat was very concerned about her perfect, beautiful Carla. I know about Grampy Bat, the school sign, and the pine cone, but what is this about a firefly and losing your squeal? asked Mar Mother Bat with alarm. Yes, my squeal is gone, rasped Carla, and I hurt all over. Mother Bat knew something was seriously wrong. She flew off to find a thermometer to check Carla's temperature. Well, no wonder, said Mother Bat with relief as she read the thermometer. Carla, you have a very high temperature. Your soft squeal made only a small echo. That means the sound waves weren't working. Then you lost your squeal completely. Your radar was broken. There was no picture. And that's why you bumped into things and why you couldn't catch dinner. Your echo wasn't doing its job. Carla, you have a virus. You're ill. Rest in the roost until you will feel better, Mother Bat said gently. Carla rested for three nights. As the moon rose on the fourth night, Carla yawned, shook off the bandages, stretched her beautiful wings, and tested her squeal. Perfect, she squealed with glee. Carla soared throughout the roost, easily flittering through the dormer vent for her nightly feed. Carla the beautiful, Carla the graceful, Carla the perfect Yuma bat had returned. Carla the clumsy was gone forever. So kids, I hope you really enjoyed uh, Darlene Hartford's Carla the clumsy bat. I hope you learned a little bit more about bats of the Okanagan. And uh, if you want some more information about uh, the, uh, the bats in the Peachland Schoolhouse, I would suggest asking your parents to look it up online for BEPS. Uh, which is uh, a local organization dedicated to protecting and promoting more understanding about bats in our area. Thanks so much.